Reggie the Front Row Report here. I have the one and the only Matthew West on the phone, man. Thank you so much for taking the time, man. It is it's exciting to have you on the phone with me right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Yeah, man. I, this uh, You guys are going to be in Indianapolis here. Uh, actually, I think this Sunday, I think you're going to be out here. And uh, with Sidewalk Prophets, Jason Castro, the Into the Light Tour, finally hitting Indianapolis, man. I'm excited. How is How have some of these shows matched up to other shows you've done in the past? Well, it, this has been uh, an incredible tour. And, um, you know, just... I'd say on a, on a, you know, on an attendance level, it's been our best yet. Just more sold out shows than we've had uh, before. So that's been exciting. Um, on a personnel level, we've got just amazing artists joining me, and uh, we're just seeing some really special things take place. So we're having a great time, so much so that we're thinking about extending our tour nice. uh, into the spring as well. So that's always a good time. Wow. It's it's almost like a Winter Jam reunion in some ways, man. You've got uh, yourself and your band, Sidewalk Profits and Jason Castro. You guys were all on Winter Jam this last year. And uh, it's always good, I would think, when you know the guys that you're on tour with already. Yeah. Um, definitely makes it easier, yeah. man. What's the dynamic backstage but, like? So it's awesome. You know, I think, um, first of all, it's, it's, when you're on a tour like Winter Jam, nobody really gets to do... Um, a very long show. You don't you don't you don't really get to do your full kind of concert experience. And so it's yeah. fun to bring those packets back out and the audience gets to hear more of each of the artists that the same to see and um backstage, you know, we're having a blast but I, I, I couldn't find nicer guys to tour with. From my band to Sidewalk and Jason Castro. I mean just an incredible group of people and most importantly everybody's hearts are just uh, linked together with a common cause of, of why we're out on the road. Like it just seems like everybody has a clear vision of what they're supposed to do and uh, and why we do what we do. Uh, there's a greater purpose here. It's not just to sell another CD. And uh, it's, to, it's to reach people and encourage people and remind them that God loves them. Awesome. Yeah, man. And I, I'm no stranger to... Uh to uh, really any of the any of the sets, any of the bands on this tour, man. I, this will be the third time this year I've seen you guys. Um, I caught you on Winter Jam when you were in Fort Wayne. I actually saw you at Spirit Song in uh, in June, which uh, was one of my one of my favorite Matthew West shows I've ever seen. Um, it was, yeah, it was great. Um, and I saw you at uh, Ignite Fest back in 2011. And that was a great, oh, yeah. great Absolutely. show as Absolutely. well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. But uh, this time around, this year, it's a little bit different uh, for me especially. You've got Into the Light Out, which is the second album, I believe, that you've been writing songs based on fan stories. You've kind of, you've really given them the platform to tell you what, basically what to write about, kind of. And it's really a cool thing. Um how really, how did that idea even come up? Well, it's just become an incredible journey. Um, I had this idea a few years ago to ask people to tell me their story, and um, I can't really explain where the idea came from other than that, you know, I feel like God has been preparing me for it all, um, for a long time, just giving me uh, a greater awareness to the stories that were going on around me to the people coming to my show. Um, and I just kind of thought, you know, what if I could go deeper than a Facebook post or a Twitter update, you know, um, and give people a chance to tell with me a greater, tell me, you know, and share with me a greater slice of their story. And, uh, you know, here I am three years later, 25,000 stories and counting later. Uh, I've written two entire CDs of songs inspired by people's stories. And, it's absolutely, it's rocked my world. It's changed my life. I can imagine, man. I just, because I'm sure there's no way you can even begin to think about what you're going to get when you when you originally put that out there, send me your stories. And some of the things that you get, I can, just from the stories that I've heard that you've told, are just, uh, I can't imagine sitting there reading those 
you know, it's one thing to hear the song, but to to hear the stories themselves are just amazing. Um, what what has some of this you know taught you about life that you didn't you know maybe you didn't realize before? Well, um, I, I would need an hour to tell you all the life lessons I've learned. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why I've, I've written two books that really inspired by the experience since then, just because life lessons seem endless. Um, but you know, if I had to pick maybe one common thread that these stories have taught me is um, I would say that you know I've learned that there is not one single story of somebody's life that is not touched by pain or brokenness or difficulty and yet there is not one single story that is beyond hope and uh, and, and those are the those are the big kind of bullet point that I've walked away from going, wow, we all have pain, we all hurt, we all have different difficult circumstances, but man, not not one of us is beyond the reach of, of the hope that can find us if we choose to turn our stories in the direction of the God who is really writing our story. Wow. How, how is it, um, I guess, um, what is one way that's really helped your spiritual walk? Um, hearing these stories and helping having it affect your your career, how does it affect your your life as a as a Christian and as a man of God? Well, you know, one of the things that's been really hard to read is just I've read so many stories that of people that have shared with me how their difficult family life has you know shaped their life and um you know i've read stories of divorced parents and abusive parents and broken homes and you know just realizing how much impact a parent has on the life of a child i think reading those stories has really driven me to my knees even more um as a husband and a father made me look at how how much influence i have in my home as a leader and um, it's made me really just ask God just to help me um, make sure that I'm creating a healthy environment where my kids feel loved and nourished. And and uh, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy how you read somebody else's story and you find yourself thinking about your own. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I myself, I have a lot of friends, or I've, I've met a lot of people myself who have, you know, you always think that um, the things that you go through personally are so hard, you know, and then you, you meet somebody who's gone through even more, and it's like, if they can go through that and be okay, then everything I'm going through is, like, nothing compared to that. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. Um, it's really Yeah, there's, uh, you know, when you start to, you know, I heard somebody say once, you put it, if everybody put all their problems in a pile, and uh, gave you a chance to see what what their problems were. Chances are you you choose to take yours back, you know, and make sure you know it's just one of those things that you know if life is not easy. Our stories are are riddled with challenges, but uh, nothing is impossible for God. And and, and those, you start to realize that those are more than just cliches, more just more than just words in a Bible. Those are words to live by. Absolutely. Um, so, how many more albums do you... Obviously, you've got enough stories to probably last the rest of your career, to make albums for the rest of your career. Is this something that you can really see yourself, you know, possibly doing for, you know, the majority of the rest of your musical career is using, you know, doing something like this? Or do you think somewhere down the road you may want to take a break from it and, you know, write some other stuff? You know, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I feel like I've kind of found my my destiny, uh, you know, at least on the music front. Um, I was launching a campaign in 2014 called One Million Stories. And uh, the idea is just to hopefully inspire people to take a look at their story and, and ask God to, get, to give them the courage to tell their story. And uh, and so that's what we're that's what we're doing in 2014. There's no slowing down. In fact, 
fact, we're about to take this to a whole new level. So we're going to, you know, obviously uh, rely on the help of uh, folks like you to get the word out and, and encourage people. Man, you've got a story, and what's going on in your life could help somebody else face whatever they're facing in their life. And uh, uh, so a new record's going to be uh, inspired by those one million stories, and I'm going to have to buy a speed reading course so I can get through them all. <laughs> That's going to be... You're going to be a busy man next year, it sounds like. Busier than ever. Yeah. It's going it, to... It, yeah, it's going to be a good kind of busy, though. Um, um, you you have met some of these people, from what I understand, um, that you've written, written songs based on their stories. Um, what... In the minutes going leading to to meeting some of these people, what is going through your head? Because um, you've heard their story, you've written something about their story. It's it's in the public, and what's going through your head the minutes before you meet them? Well, obviously, I'm I'm incredibly nervous. So uh, uh-huh. you know, uh, it's been a it's been an uh, amazing experience. But I was always nervous as the. Um, you know, I want to make sure that they like the song, and uh, that's been my main thing. Um, so it's it's uh, you know it's it, you're filled with nervousness, excitement, but mostly anticipation, and kind of just amazed that you get to dig in and spend life. You know, get get to become part of this person's life, and uh, feel like I've made some lifelong friends. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, I, I can't even imagine what that would what that would be like for me personally, um, I would be terrified um, to, uh, whether I was in your position or their position, I would be, I would be nervous, I'd be a little scared too, um, you know, um, but uh, it's really cool that all that is happening. How his stuff, how his, um, this really affected your ministry as a Christian artist um, from the beginning when you started. Um, how, what is the biggest thing, um, that maybe you wouldn't really think of that your ministry has changed in a way? Well, I think it's just become more, it's about more than just trying to write a hit song, you know? Uh-huh. It's, uh, and that's, you know, that's become more fulfilling, that this is about being involved in the lives of people and hoping to inspire and encourage and, um, and that's been the best part of it. So I, I wouldn't trade this journey I've had for the world. And um, I'm looking forward to continuing to write more songs, reading more stories, and hopefully inspiring more people. 